My name is Talshan Dalil Khan Kazi. I am assistant from the Department of Children Infection Disease and today I will show you my lecture about one of the widespread infection disease called infection mononucleosis in children. According to my lecture, we will uh, tell about the definition of this disease, we will give the etiology factors, epidemiology of course, uh, tell about pathogenesis, classification, and clinical manifestations and diagnostic and treatment tactics of this disease. But first, what is the infection mononucleosis? This is one of the widespread infection disease in childhood and every year the uh, incidence of this infection only rises and meets chronic forms too. And uh, one of the important facts, there are no specific etiotropic treatment of this disease. The definition infection mononucleosis is an acute viral infection caused by an Epstein-Barr viruses and characterized by a lesion of the oropharynx, uh, of the lymph nodes and the, uh, other lymphatic tissue during this enlargement of the spleen, liver, and the formulation in the blood, specific cells, the typical mononuclears. The pathogen is Epstein-Barr viruses. They are from the family of herpesferida. They are DNA-containing virus, and uh, they has difficult structure. The pathogen has lipoprotein shell. From this shell, uh, we can find in the blood any antigens. First of them, this is EA, early antigens, IgM, IgG. And uh, then from the capsid uh, of the virus, you can find viral capsid antigen, VCA, like immunoglobulins, class M and G. And uh, has a nuclei from the nucleocapsids, uh, we can find Epstein-Barr nuclear antigen, EBNA, a IgM and IgG, and of course, double strand DNA of the virus. Uh, these antigens uh, show us in which period of the infection uh, your patient. Uh, for example, the first from the first days and weeks from the infected this virus, uh, viral capsid antigen like IgM and IgG will rise and uh, at the first two weeks, they uh, rises to the maximum numbers, then will gradually decrease and they can find in the blood, mm, like IgG, in the lowest doses. Then after two, three weeks, early antigen, and after uh, three, four weeks from the beginning of disease, uh, nuclear antigens can be found, like IgM, then gradually decreased and they will find in the blood like IgG till the end of life. Uh, what about the epidemiology? This is clear anthroponotic infection. It means the source infection only sick person to the healthy person. Uh, and the, the main transmission ways is airborne. Uh, and the um, disease has specific, specific seasonality Mostly, this is spring-autumn period, and the immunity after illness is strong, but not non-sterile. What about history of this infection disease? Epstein-Barr viruses from the family of fourth group of herpes viride, and uh, it's named after uh, Honor, uh, English virologist, uh, Professor Sir Anthony uh, Epstein, and even Barr. The pathogenesis, we already said like uh, the main transmission ways is airborne, mostly by airborne root virus uh, is penetrates to upper respiratory tract epithelial cells. Here they are penetrates to the mucous membrane and uh, attacked our B lymphatic tissue and B cells. And here they start their reproduction and infected, already infected by this virus, B cells can be uh, staying in two um, 
state first is active infection next latent state latent state can be given to us reactivation or chronization of infection and uh, b lymphatic tissue means in our upper respiratory tract it's mostly our of course nasopharyngeal tonsils our uh, oropharyngeal tonsils and our regional lymph nodes and then it can be generalized and uh, uh, attacked our liver and spleen too. Uh, what about classification? By severity, it's divided to mild, moderate and severe forms. By type, typical, atypical. Typical forms, this is disease, uh, which during this specific clinic, uh, classical clinical picture. Atypical forms is divided to subclinical, during without symptoms, erased form, and visceral forms. Classification by duration is divided to uh, acute form, uh, duration up to three months, prolonged form three, six months, and chronic form up to six months. And by character of infection, they are divided to smooth uh, without complications and non-smooth with complications. And by severity, we already said like this divided into mild forms and mod moderate and severe forms. And uh, the first uh, sign to dividing to this severity, uh, of course, intoxication syndrome. In mild form, characterized by mild intoxication, temperature rises no more than 38.5 degree. And the enlargement of the lymph nodes mostly one, two group. And tonsillitis mostly catarrhal uh, or sometimes lacunar. S liver is uh, enlarged and uh, the size is no more than one, uh, 1.5 centimeters and the enlargement of the spleen 0 0.5 centimeters. In the moderate cases, intoxication is moderate too. The temperature can be rises up to 38.5, 39.5 and the uh, uh, enlargement of the tonsils, oropharyngeal tonsils mostly to the second degree. More than two groups of lymph nodes will be included and the lacunar angina tonsillitis will be present too and the, uh, the sizes of the liver will be um, increased to the two uh, dash 2.5 centimeters below the edge of the uh, rib arc and uh, the size of the spleen will be raised 0.51 centimeters and the severe cases uh, during this uh, severe intoxication temperature will be rises more than 39.5 and uh, more degrees sometimes 42 and the uh, swelling of the oropharyngeal tonsils more than two second third degree and more than two groups of lymph nodes will be included and the uh, uh, angina tonsillitis will be necrotic sometimes and uh, lacunar uh, and sizes of the liver will be more than 2.5 centimeters and the spleen more than two centimeters sometimes it can be rises to the pelvic organs too the clinical manifestations the clinical manifestations of infection mononucleosis is very um, variety and uh, characterized by polymorphism. The incubation period uh, mostly uh, is 5-12 days, sometimes can be rises to 30-45 days. In the clinical pictures uh, of disease, we can isolate any syndromes, first of them and primary of them is, of course, intoxication syndrome. And intoxication syndrome is characterized by first is fever. Fever will be uh, different uh, according to the severity of disease. Next, uh, babies feel themselves very lethargic, weakness, uh, has a headache, lack of appetite. They feel themselves uh, all time um, tired, and etc. Next syndrome is uh, one of the main symptom syndrome two. This is catarrhal syndrome or respiratory catarrhal syndrome. Uh, even in the pathogenesis, we already says like uh, this virus mostly infected B lymphatic tissue. Mm, our 
nasopharyngeal lymph nodes will be increased. Nasopharyngeal tonsils will be increased in the size, swelling, and according to this, they are blocked the nasal um, cavity. And uh, in the clinical manifestation, we can see nasal conjunction. Baby has difficulty nasal breathing. They uh, mostly breathe due to the open mouth. And uh, uh, some parents can be complaints to the snoring when baby sleep. And uh, according to the hypoxemia, um, baby has a pallor of the skin, puffiness of the mostly eyelids and the face, um, face of baby. Next, and uh, one of the priority syndrome two, uh, it meets in the all patients in, uh, with infection mononucleosis, this is syndrome of lymphadenopathy. Um, first groups of lymph nodes uh, is our regional submandibular, then cervical lymph nodes will be increased. Sometimes we can find them uh, like necklace. Uh, all groups of cervical lymph nodes step by step will be increased. Sometimes it can be visible uh, like in this picture without palpation. Next syndrome uh, called syndrome of angina. By another word, this is tonsillitis. It can be uh, catarrhal tonsillitis, just redness and hyperemia of the uh, referential tonsils. Then lacunar, uh, like in these pictures, um, they will co covered by whitish, yellowish plaque. Tonsillitis, uh, it's just a result of the decreasing of local immunity here, like viral viruses is affected here, these zones, and the local immunity will be low. And uh, you know, in our oral cavity, we have a lot of different bacteria too, and uh, one of them can be uh, attacked our oropharyngeal tonsils and uh, gives to us purulent tonsillitis. And this plaque in the nature, this, they are Pass. And mo most of them uh, will be caused by streptococci pyogenes, um, staphylococci aureus, and etc. Uh, next syndrome is hepatolenal syndrome or syndrome of hepatosplenomegaly. Uh, the sizes of the liver and spleen will be rises from the first 5-10 uh, days from the beginning of illness. This, uh, and in these sizes of the liver will be rises gradually and the sizes of the spleen will be rises rapidly then liver but decreasing of the spleen size um, more rapidly then are uh, decreasing sizes of the liver sometimes in uh, some babies can be meets syndrome of the exanthema or rashes and the rashes mostly spotty papular some of them can be merged with themselves and localized on the face, trunk, and the extremities, but not uh, damage the skin of the um, hands and feet. And sometimes it can be, it seems like um, allergic reaction or um, measles baby, for example. Differential diagnosis, uh, I'm already says, um, according to the cataral phenomena, like Intoxic um, sorry, intoxication, then catarrhal phenomena like uh, nasal conjunction and rash syndrome. Uh, we will doing differential diagnosis with measles. But in measles, we know like uh, measles characterized by a very acute catarrhal phenomena too. Baby has conjunctivitis, runny nose, and barking cough and hoarseness and voice, and the rash will be appear gradually. Uh, and uh, giving to us pigmentation. Next disease is adenovirus infection. This is one of the ARVIs. And uh, common signs is intoxication syndromes, tonsillitis will be, and uh, um, lymphadenopathy, hepatosplenomegaly will be too, but in adenovirus infection during these cataral signs like conjunctivitis, uh, runny nose, cough, pharyngitis too. And the other disease like HIV uh, infection, cytomegalovirus infection, and their mononucleosis like form uh, will be diagnosed. Um, and uh, we need to do doing differential diagnosis too. And uh, we need to uh, doing differential diagnosis with um, our simple acute tonsillitis caused by 
bacteria like streptococcal tonsillitis, uh, staphylococcal tonsillitis, for example, but uh, this only intoxication and angina will be common signs and uh, no hepatosplen amygdala here. Infection mononucleosis can be given to us a different lot of complications and uh, according to the time of the recurrence we need to divide it, uh, them to early complications, uh, first three weeks of the Ill illness and the late complications after three weeks from the illness. And uh, from early complications one of the main and important to us this is spleen rupture. We know the size of the spleen will be rapidly increased and the babies mostly they very active they want to running jumping and others and uh, they can be has the traumatic of this organ and the spleen can be ruptured and the next uh, due to the swelling of the oropharyngeal tonsils um, some babies can has asphyxia some of them has um, polyneuritis, encephalitis, myocarditis, intestinal pneumonia. And for late complications, mostly is hepatitis, thrombocytopenic purpura, uh, plastic or hemolytic anemia will be a cure. How diagnose this disease? Of course, first we need to do general clinic analysis. First of them, CBC. Complement or general blood tests. According to this, we will find leukocytosis, uh, like a, as a result of the attack of bacterial flora, then uh, lymphocytosis and uh, monocytosis. And uh, one of the specific signs uh, is uh, uh, you can find specific uh, changed big lymphocytes calls atypical mononuclears. They shouldn't present it at our peripheral blood and normal. Uh, if you will find uh, at the number of up to 5%, the diagnosis is likely. Up to 10% diagnosed is possible. And if the number more than 10%, diagnosis is reliable. And the urine analysis mostly not changed. This is the um, how looks this atypical mononuclears? This is the large lymphocytes with a symmetrical located nucleus. Uh, specific laboratory tests to confirm your diagnosis, mostly this serological analysis, like ELISA test from the blood, uh, and to finding antibodies of Epstein Barr viruses. There are uh, early antigen IgM. Uh, viral capsid uh, VCA, IgM, IgG, and the Epstein-Barr nuclear ang uh, antigen, IgM, IgG. And the molecular genetic method, uh, th this is PCR, to finding, determine DNA of the Epstein-Barr virus. And uh, you can find in the slides, like the um, saliva gives in the 70, 80% a positive result in blood 50-60%, total blood in the saliva, uh, the uh, number is rises and urine less number. And uh, uh, how interpret this analysis of serological analysis ELISA? Um, healthy person shouldn't have all of these antigens. Acute phase of infection, uh, early antigen and capsid antigen, IgM should be positive and finding DNA by PCR2. And the past infection give us uh, viral capsid antigen, IgG, nuclear antigen, IgG. Sometimes DNA can be positive. But M, uh, anti uh, IgM shouldn't be present. Uh, next, about treatment. At the beginning of my lecture, I'm already says like there are no specific treatment of this disease, and the most uh, treatment is non-drug treatment. Uh, it's necessary to saving um, right regimen. This is the best re re bed rest during all the fever period, then, then semi-best period. We know like one of the complications should be spleen rupturing. According to this, we need saving semi-bed rest then. And the hygiene of the patient and the mm, diet number uh, 13. And uh, if 
uh, liver, um, hepatitis will be a cure number five. Uh, principles of the therapy, drug therapy. The most therapy is symptomatic disintoxication and pathogenetic treatment. Symptomatic treatment include uh, first for relief the fever we are using antipyretics. First of them acetaminophen or paracetamol at the dose of 10-15 mg per kg per os or per rectum. Or, um, next is ibuprofen 5-10 mg per kg. Uh, per os or per rectum and no more than three times a day mm. and uh, next uh, if a baby has severe intoxication severe case of infection mononucleosis we can giving fluids for this intoxication purpose using uh, ten, five ten percent uh, dextrose or glucose at the dose of 10 15 milliliters per kilogram or um, 0 0.9 percent sodium chloride at same dose 10-15 milliliters per kilogram and uh, um, pathogenetic treatment it's uh, you know like secondary bacteria flora can be attacked and uh, we will has purulent angina occurring this we need to using antibiotics but in antibiotics uh, we needn't using any antibiotics uh, which um, contain ampicillin it's contraindicated uh, we mostly we are using uh, azithromycin uh, 10 mg per kg once a day uh, three days or cefuroxima dose 80 mg per kg sub um, intramuscularly and uh, look attention like in drugs containing ampicillin it's contraindicated because they can um, cause drug disease and allergic reaction and gives to us rashes and uh, levamicetin and other no, uh, shouldn't be used too about prevention of this disease there are no specific prevention no vaccination from this infection but mostly we need using non-specific prevention factors too this is saving hygiene washing um, hands of a baby uh, and uh, using sanitizers wearing the mask uh, when period of for example of viruses will be cured and uh, eat more fruits and vegetables and etc that's all thank you for attention